Welcome to this fourth part of morphology and the next uh, item we are going to explain is blending. Blending involves two or rarely more base words. It's the process combining two words into one, deleting material from one or both of the source words. It has often been described as a rather irregular phenomenon, but we can find a surprising degree of regularity. Now, as far as blends are concerned, we can identify two different classes or types. So we have got type 1, exemplified by A, examples, breathalyzer, mocap, motel, sign fee. For example, breathalyzer, it's an analyzer of breath. It's a machine that analyzes breath to see the degree of alcohol in people's, you know, uh, you know bodies. Mo camp. It's a camp where you can park your car, your motor, near your place where you live. Motel, same thing here. It's a hotel where you can park your car near your room. This is science fiction, okay, something you know. This is type 1. Now, type 2 is represented by the B examples. Botel, boost, branch, channel, compander, and so on and so forth. Just have a look at them here. Okay. Now let's have a look at uh, the characteristics of A examples. Blends here, this is the first blend, this is another blend, another blend here. Now in A examples, we are dealing with existing compounds that are shortened to form a new word. What about their meaning? This is what we call semantic evaluation. In all of them, we, we ask this question, what kind of? It's a kind of analyzer it analyzes breath you know remember breath analyzer what kind of camp it's a camp where you can park your car near your place where you live okay for example motel what kind of hotel it's a hotel where you can park still your car near your room here so i mean uh, in all a examples and things similar to them we always ask this this question what kind of now, as far as the B blends are concerned, the B blends denote entities that share properties of the reference of both elements. For example, both tell. What are the first elements here? Both. The second element, hotel. Now, both tell is both a boat and a hotel. Branch. Here we cannot say what kind of. Okay, but it is this and this thing here. Okay, brunch. We cannot see what kind of lunch or what kind of breakfast. Brunch is both breakfast and lunch, which means that the meaning here depends on the two base words composing the blend. Same thing here, channel. What is channel? It's a tunnel which is uh, under a channel or a tunnel which is in some sense or in, in, in some respects a channel here. In this respect, proper blends resemble copulative compounds such as actor, director, writer, journalist. It follows from this fact that both base words of a blend must be somehow semantically related. What do you mean by this? Uh, the meaning of the two words in the blend should have something in common. They should belong to the same field. For example, actor, director, writer, journalist. They, they have something in common as far as their meaning is concerned. Now, the two words are, are of the same category. Most of, the t most, of the, most of the time, we combine nouns together in blends. And this is another characteristic of blends here. This is a formal property of blends. What is it? It's always the first part of the first element that is combined with the second part of the second element. By first element, I mean the first word in, in the blend. And the second element, I mean the second word in the blend. Look, here it seems we have got a general rule which can help us understand what happens in blending as a process. We have got A, B. These are the elements belonging to the first word, the first element. 
CD these are the units belonging to the second element okay now what do we do in the blend we keep a the first element of the first word and we keep D the second element of the second word and the blend takes this this shape or this structure a D remember this rule a B the first word the second word C D what do we do in the blend we keep a and D and we, we, we give our word here now as evidenced by guesstimate look by the way here in this in this blend we have got the verb to guess and estimate to estimate now what happens here here B or C can be null that is to say one of the two forms may appear in its full form what do you mean by this either guess we can say that guess is taken as a whole word and in estimate we, opt we, we omit s and we, we are left only with teammate and we mix the two we obtain guesstimate here in this case b is null because in the first word there is no b where the whole word is a but what happens in the other case if we say that we have got estimate the whole word so what happens in guess we we, uh, we keep only g and s in guess the s is is omitted so this let's uh, read here just to understand as evidenced by guess estimate b or c can be null that is to say one of the two forms may appear in its full form look if here we have got different explanations the orthographic and the phonological explanation or representation if we take the orthographic representation guesstimate does not truncate the first element B is null this is what I have just said if we take guess together it means that there is no B okay so B is null now, if we take the phonological representation, the way we pronounce the words, we could also argue that estimate is not truncated, and C is null. Which means, if we consider that the whole word here, estimate, is taken together, it means that there is no C in the second word. We are, we are kept only, only with D. The whole of it is D. So this is what I mean the explanation here. Now, there is only one exception to this pattern in our data. Remember the general rule. A, B plus C, D, we obtain A, D. This is the pattern of what I'm talking about. There is only one exception to this pattern in our data. It's modem. What is modem? It's a blend obtained from the word first modulator the second word is demodulator here what happens here the blend has the structure AC instead of AD just write the two words modulator plus the other word demodulator and see what happens in it it's AC rather than AD now in general blends that do not correspond to the structure AD are in a clear minority which means that the majority of cases of blends follow this pattern this structure AD and this uh, an AC this structure is very rare okay now the relationship between morphology and phonology gives another level now we have finished if you like with the morphological processes up to now let's deal with an, another issue in morphology here we are trying to, to explain the link between morphology and phonology and when we have got both of them linked they give us one linguistic level that we call morphophonemics what happens in morphophonemics or what are we dealing with you know under morphophonemics we are trying to show how morphemes are analyzed in terms of phonology 
Okay? In fact, in other words, we are trying to show the relationship between morphemes and sounds. So, some morphemes have different allomorphs. They are pronounced in different ways. They have got different realizations. And this is the case of the plural S here, which can be pronounced as S, Z, is, or Z, E-N sometimes, or just A in other cases. It depends on the words, it depends on cases here. Now, I think we have to stop here. Uh, because we are going to I mean, concentrate later on in the next video uh, on uh, this uh, morpheme, the plural S, and how we can deal with it from a morphological and phonological you know, point of view, which means that the morphophonemic level, how it can explain or deal with this morpheme and another one that we are going to see later on.